Welcome to the fifth lesson. I'm really excited for this one because we have done all the heavy lifting and now we can add in all the final fun little details that we'll tie it all together. Let's begin with some principles. First of all, I like to add some clouds to my city. I keep the density low so it looks more like fog, but I think this really helps give the city some more depth. You can append the clouds from the SF file you already downloaded for the character. Just go to append again, select the file and then append the clouds collection. If your PC is already at its limit, you can also use images or video planes instead of volumetrics. And then just plug it into the base color and the mission and also in the alpha to make the black background transparent. But we will go with the real clouds. Next, we want to work on the lighting. This is really a preference and you can make it blue day like we have now or a foggy night, but I think I will go for something like golden hour. Another thing we can think about is if we want the sun in the background, because we, if we do, we can add some nice lens flare later, which can also make it cinematic too, or it's just another tool how you can like enhance your shot. But I think for this one, I want the sun to be on the left side. So later we can also work with some sun rays. I also put some clouds in the background because I think that looks cool. On these, I want to increase the density to one, but to make sure not every other clouds gets affected too, go to this cloud symbol and click on the number to create a separate cloud and then do the same on the material. And now you can increase the density. We also want to bring some clouds in the foreground so it really feels connected to the background and not just like a separate layer. Also, don't forget to select the clouds with the high density. By the way, if you don't use my Blender file template, make sure to set the volume step rate on the render tab to 100 and the max step of 128. You will not really see a difference, but it will become way faster. Next, let's use a different HDRI. I want one where the sun is bright, so I choose this one. Then I imported it into the ECHDRI add-on and rotated it so the sun shines from the left. I also decreased the strength and saturation a bit and I put the sun strength to 0.001. Next, let's change our color space to HEX under color management in the render tab and the look to medium high contrast. Next, let's add some light rays. For that, add in a plane and then go to the shading space. With the plane still selected, press the key left to the number one key on your keyboard to only view this new plane. Then create a new material. Delete the principal BSDF and add in a transparent and an emission node material and mix it. Then add in a UV map node and separate XYC node and a color ramp node. Plug the UV into the separate and then from the X into the color ramp and then plug it into the mix shader factor. Make sure you're in cycles to see the changes. Then on the color ramp, select B spline and add another black color stop to the middle. Now we have a nice fade off. To get a fade from the sides too, duplicate the color ramp and plug it into the Y of the separate X, Y, C node and combine it with a multiply math node with the other color ramp. On the new color ramp, select ease and put the black stop to the left and right. Let's also scale the bright side so it spreads out. If it now looks weird, just add some loop cuts. Now you can add more in the middle to give the light ray some more variation. Let's adjust the color of the emission texture and the strength. We can now control how much transparent it should be by changing the white color of the top slider. Let's move it in place of our scene. By the way, I learned this quick trick from Cartesian Caramel on YouTube. As you can see, the spread is a bit too much for the sun. That is so far away. So you can easily add in a new plane and apply the material and change the shape to something more realistic. I prefer also to just use a single white stop in the color ramp so it looks like one light ray and then duplicate it to have multiple. Let's also add the color so it matches the lit clouds in the background. Now you can just duplicate and move them around until you like it. What I like to do is to have these light rays on a separate layer. So let's create a new layer and copy the settings and call it light rays. Then activate the holdout button and activate 
the holdout on everything and deactivate the cloud collection. Now in the render mode, you only see the light rays and the mask of the building in front of it. Let's keep that for now and let's switch back to our normal layer and let's name it main. Also make sure that under the view layer tab, the checkbox render single layer is ticked. The next thing to do is to activate the depth of field. Go to the camera and activate it. Then select our character for the focus distance. Because everything is a bit blurry in the preview of cycles, let's go to material preview mode and let's deactivate our clouds real quick. Now we can see it really well. Test it by setting the f-stop to 0 0.1. This is way too extreme, but you can see that everything in the background and the foreground gets a bit blurry. So let's do something realistic like 1.8. This is still low, but because the focus is far away from the character, it looks right to me. You can see it best if you zoom into the background and deactivate it and activate it again. Do the same for the camera of the first shot. Here, let's select the amateur as a focus point and then select the right hand bone. Then here, let's do an f-stop of 2.4. You can see because the camera is closer, you can see the depth of field way better. Another method I often use if I want to change the focus dynamically or animate it is to add an empty and then select it as the focus object. So now I can animate the empty and the focus will also follow it. I did a quick test render and I really like it so far. By the way, ignore the artifacts in the background. We get rid of them by rendering the light rays separately. Here are the things I want to improve. The glass material is too dark and not enough reflective, and I want another cloud to the right side behind the first building. Let's put some clouds there real quick and check if it looks better. Yes, way better. In the end, it's just about filling up the empty spots to make it more detailed. Okay, let's go to the shading space and select the glass material, and let's change the metallic to 0 0.5, so it's a bit more see-through because now when it's shattered, it looks too much like metal, but I still want a bit metal because else it's not enough reflective. Let's also turn the alpha to one. Maybe we will change it again after test render, but let's keep it for now. Now let's do the test render, set the quality to 50% and the samples to something like 16. Try GPU rendering. If it runs out of memory or crashes, try CPU. I also had to try CPU and it just takes a bit longer, but it works perfectly. Before rendering, save it and let's try to render a frame. It shouldn't take longer than 30 seconds. If so, try to set the samples even lower because this is really just a low preview test render. You want to reach a value of 5 to 30 seconds per frame for this test render. Set the start frame to 72 and the end frame to 192 and create an output folder. If you don't use my template file, make sure to check these settings. Set the file output to PNG. Make sure the denoiser is active with open image denoise selected. Make sure the noise threshold is activated with 0 0.01. Make sure uh, you have a light bounce of four and also activated the motion blur and persistent data. Then render it. It's finished now for me, so let's take a look. I imported it into After Effects, but you can use whatever video editing software you want to use. Then let's import the PNG file as a sequence and make sure the frame rate is set correct. Let's take a look. Okay, there are a few things I want to change. In the foreground, I want to add some really small clouds right below the glass. I also want more and smaller glass particles. Then I have to check the timing again because the character goes off before the glass into slow motion, which looks a little bit weird. Then the background feels a bit disconnected and it could be just a still image. So I also want to animate a few things there, like the cloud movement and maybe a few other things. With that newly gained knowledge, let's go back to our Blender file. Let's select the character amateur and go into pose mode. Select all bones with A and now we can move this keyframe to frame 84. Now it looks better. Go out of pose mode and select the particle system. This now depends on your PC, but if your PC can handle it, put the number to 10,000 or even more and the scale to 0 0.075. Again, this is also preference, so you can also choose different settings. And let's bake it again, of course. Let's save an incremental backup. 
I also slightly changed the timing and I have now a start frame of 71 and an end frame of 78 on the particles. I also turned the velocity to 6 instead of 7 and on the wind I turned down the middle keyframe to 22.5. Now it looks a bit better in my opinion. Then also bake it again of course. After that I put two small clouds in the foreground. I also put one right here to the right side. Now let's select all clouds in the background and let's add a location keyframe to them. And then let's go to the first frame and move them just a tiny bit. Don't do it too much because it will look weird. Just move them a tiny bit to the left and add another one again. Then go to the animation space, select all the graphs with A and press T to switch to linear again. Let's do the same for the foreground clouds, but a bit less movements. You can also use a slight random transform on the y-axis of 10 meters and then keyframe again on the last frame to not have them all move at the same speed. Then another small detail we can do, but only if your PC can handle it, is to create an instance with all D of these buildings and just put them below or short so they have a bit more to reflect. Then on the low dense cloud, I put a density from 0 0.1 to 0 0.25. The last thing we will do is to add some simple bird effects. Add a cube and roughly shape it like a bird. In edit mode, add two planes as wings and then put the wings in a downwards position. Add a shape key. Then add another shape key and put the wings up in edit mode. Now animate a second shape key so it goes up and down. Make sure it's really slow because Remember, we are in slow motion. Add a cycles modifier in the graphs editor, so it repeats the motion over and over again. Add a solidify with 0 0.5 and a subdivision modifier with 1. And this re can really look funny because it doesn't really matter because it's so far in the distance. And you don't really need the subdivision modifier if your PC is already at the limit. Add a black material with a roughness to 1 and duplicate the birds 5 times and offset the animation. Then put them all in a collection and let's call it bird and put them out of the way. Add in a plane and add a particle system. Set the number to 25 and the start frame from 0 to 90. Make the lifetime 200 and under source the chittering to 2. Then under velocity, make it 1 on the y-axis and 3 on the z-axis. And under field weights, turn the gravity and wind to 0. Then bake it. Now we have some extra details. You can duplicate it and also duplicate the particle system by clicking on the number 2. So we have a separate particle system and they're not linked. And then adjust it, add some more birds, like change the particle start and end. So we can just add some birds all over the scenes. You can also use a negative value from the start frame, so they are already in the air once the animation starts. For example, if you choose like minus 100 for the start frame, they will be up in the air when the frame starts, so they're not all just flying out of the buildings when the animation starts. But don't forget to increase the lifetime so they don't just disappear. Now we're finally ready to render out our final animation. I would do a low-rise test render with the same settings as before to see if everything still works out. Maybe the birds are a little bit too fast or the clouds are a little bit too fast. So I would suggest to do that first so you don't render it high quality and after many hours you see that something is wrong. So just like double check everything and maybe render a low res again. If everything worked out in the test render, I would suggest to use these settings. And these are also the settings I use to render my animation. Use sample of 64, then the open image denoise and also change the light bounce to 4. It is already like that if you have my startup file. And then set the volume step rate to 100 with a 128 max steps. Then turn the motion blur on and check the persistent data. Double check you still have the HEX color space selected with medium contrast as color management. And if you have the power, you can render it at 4K. But because I have to render on CPU, I leave it at full HD because it will take way too long. And I only want it to render like over the next eight hours overnight. By the way, if you have some spare resources on your PC, I would first increase to 4K res. And then if you still have even more power, you can also increase the samples. 
I just found out that if you first increase the resolution, the denoiser gets way better and you have better results and same render time than if you first start increasing the samples. By the way, I have created a checklist with everything which you can also find attached, which I use on every project to make sure I did not forget something. Definitely check it out and feel free to make a copy of it and use it for yourself or also extend it with your own stuff. For me, the render takes around 10 hours, so I will render it overnight. I just rendered one frame and then I multiplied the time it took with the frame range we have. For example, now it's um, 192 and with that I had my end time, how long it takes, which was around 10 hours for me, so I will render it overnight. Do all the same for the first shot and render it out too. Don't forget for the first shot to set the frame range from 1 to 75. I also added some small details, like I added some small mini clouds to the first shot as well, just to create like some more depth on the foreground and some small details because it's more zoomed in than the second shot. But yeah, this is again really up to you how you want to make it and how you want to create this scene. Let's also not forget our light rays. So for that, just switch to the light rays layer and make sure that all the collections are on holdout and to deactivate all the collections with clouds in it. And then except for the light rays collection, of course. Then also switch to transparent in the render settings under film and in the output settings, switch from RGBA to only RGB because I want a black background. Then also put the bursts we just created, like the particle systems, into collection and also activate the holdout. Now when you render it, you should only see the light rays and the masks in front of them. So when we have that, we can also render out the light rays. For these, you can use really low quality settings. Make sure it's also full HD and set the samples maybe to 16 or even lower and yeah, check out for yourself what looks best, but this doesn't has to be high quality. And then also set the frame range from 72 to 192 again, and then render it out for the second shot too. You can do it also for the first shot if you want to have the light rays in the first shot too. So yes, make sure to do that too so we can work with them in post-processing. In the next episode, I will show you how you can easily add some variations and do some changes so you can get your own unique animation. I will show you how you can quickly like turn it into a desert scene or a snowy landscape with a mountain in the background or even some fire and explosion action at night. And yes, we will go over that quickly. And then of course, I will also show you the whole post-processing process I do. So yes, I'm looking forward to that and see you there.